unto the Church of God and Saints of Christ, to the Bishop Shingazi in his absence, to the evangelists at large, the elders, I see Elder Selo Mokatula online today, uh, to the daughter elders, to all those assembled on this platform, unto the Church of God and Saints of Christ in general. I thank God for his loving kindness and his new mercies towards me that he has enabled me to arise one more time to thank him for giving me the breath of life. The activity of my limbs and most importantly, a sound mind to continue to serve him in spirit and in truth. I thank God for keeping you all through these uncertain times that your bed did not become your cooling board, but you're here alive and well, I pray. And for that, we bless God on this beginning of God's holy and blessed Sabbath day. Now, I will not be be before you long today, but we want to hear what thus said the Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my everlasting redeemer. Let us turn to St. Matthew 17, 17 to 20. So the 17th chapter and verses 17 to 20, where I'll be taking my text from today. It reads thus, then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, and here, listen to this, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. My subject today is God specializes in things that are impossible. God specializes in things that are impossible. I am reminded of a time, I wanna tell you a little story. I'm reminded of a time when I was learning to swim. So my family members, they would take me to the pool to try to teach me the necessary skills to possibly save my life in potentially dangerous situations at the beach. Because um, when I lived in Jamaica, we lived close to the beach. So they would guide me by encouraging me to get comfortable in the water. Then they would allow me to get used to floating by holding on to the side of the pool and letting my legs float behind me. But before we could even begin, something would evoke an immense amount of fear in my body to the point where I would start to cry and almost accidentally drown my family members in the process. And with every instruction, all I could say was, this is impossible. I can't, I won't, I'm not. That mindset of impossibility caused me to believe that I would never learn. But they kept pushing me and telling me not to panic. But that panic was the thing that was holding me back from learning how to swim. And in fact, it could actually cause me to drown. So it is in life. We often panic about every situation before we put forth effort. Where I'm not, I'm not gonna get that promotion on the job. I'm never going to be able to buy a car. I will never go to college. But Jesus tells us to have faith as a grain of a mustard seed. And we know a mustard seed is very tiny. It's about one to two millimeters in diameter. And instead of having that little bit, little bit of mustard seed faith, we allow the cares of life to cripple us to the point we can't, we can't even function anymore in our everyday lives. We become depressed, we become defeated and filled with hopelessness. But let me remind you saints that God specializes in the things that are impossible. There are many instances in the scriptures where God's omnipotent power is demonstrated. We, we know the story of Sarah and Abraham. They were doubtful of God's promise that he would give them a son because they were old and the Bible said well stricken or afflicted in their age. They were weak, feeble, and very fragile. 
Sarah even laughed within herself because she thought, how could this be possible? How could I bear a son in my age? But doubting God was a demonstration of her skepticism. But as God promised, Sarah was able to bear a son named Isaac, all because God specializes in things that are impossible. God's power is uncontested. He can do above all that we ask or even can conceive in our minds. His power is infinitely greater than any deed that you and I can do. In St. Matthew, about the 19th chapter, we heard about the story of a young man who he was rich in possessions. He asked Jesus what he needed to do to be saved. Jesus told him to relinquish everything that he owned to the poor and follow him. The young man was troubled with Jesus's answer because in his mind, he would lose everything he acquired, although he kept the commandments from a younger age until that very moment. The luxurious life he had would no longer be of significance, but rather he was commissioned to devote a life, devote his life to Christ. How many of us saints, let's think about it. How many of us would readily give up our greatest possessions in our everyday lives? Some of us would, and some maybe wouldn't, but the issue is your perspective and your belief. Is salvation, the life beyond here, important to us? Do we value our belief in God and his son, Jesus Christ, enough to trust in his word? Jesus told his disciples that it is easier for a camel to go through an eye of a, of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were in awe of what Jesus was saying to them because they thought if a rich man couldn't be saved, who then could be saved? Jesus said to his disciples, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. They did not understand that riches wasn't the ticket to the holy city. We find hope, saints, and understanding in this. And Evangelist Stipe spoke about it last Sabbath in 2 Corinthians 4, 17 to 18. It says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, they're temporary, they're but for a moment, but the things which are not seen are eternal. First Peter 5.10 states, but the God of all grace, who hath called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. God, as the specialist of making the impossible possible, has given us the formula through his son, Jesus Christ, to strengthen and, and settle the fear within us. It is due to our own unbelief that drives that fear into our hearts. And we may say it is, it is human emotion to be fearful or doubtful, but what is the point, saints? What's the point of going to church and even praying to the Father up in heaven if you don't believe? What is the point? First John 5, 13 says, these things have I written unto you that, that written unto you that believe on the name of the son of God, that ye know ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the son of God. When we believe on the son, we acknowledge the father. And therefore we begin to understand that we can do all things, all things through Christ, which strengthens us. What can worrying do for us? What can de being despondent do for us? What do we have to lose by trusting God and knowing that the number one specialist in dealing with our sickness, our family problems, our money problems, our work problems, and our seemingly impossible circumstances, God can cast out all of our fears. God specializes in the things that are impossible. Stop fighting your own battles. Stop fighting your own battles. Don't you know? The battle's not yours, it's the Lord's. God knows what's best for you. And like Nike, you gotta just do it. Pray right now to God for whatever the situation is that you're facing. It doesn't make sense to become sad in your circumstances. Pray now and wait on him, just do it. 
Like Apple said, think different. We have to think different than we did before. Our thought used to be it is impossible. But once we have come to know that God specializes in the things that are impossible, we begin to think different. He can turn around that impossible situation and make it possible. Like State Farm Insurance Company, God is there. He is there to cover us at every stage of our lives. He is ever present and he has guaranteed unto us goodness and mercy goodness and mercy which is following us all the days of our life his grace is like bouncy paper towels he's the quicker picker upper because he will pick us up and turn us around and place our feet on higher ground like levi's jeans come on god's quality never goes out of style because he's from everlasting to everlasting thou art god like l'oreal said we Saints, you're worth it. God said so because he gave his son, Jesus Christ, to the whole world to die on the cross for you and I. Can you imagine the pain as he was pierced in his side? Can you imagine how he felt? We must be worth it like the Energizer battery. His mercies, they keep going and going and going and going. Like Verizon Telephone Company, God is asking us, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? With this pandemic, can you hear me now? People are out of jobs, can you hear me now? We done lost loved ones, can you hear me now? God is asking if we can hear him. We ought to trust him. We ought to trust him, saints. Know that he will carry us through. Why? Because God specializes in the things that are impossible. May God bless and keep you is my earnest prayer.